that whole slight delay for when you go live and YouTube catches up. But hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our second Tuesday live stream. Whew, it's going to be an interesting one. So I'm going to I'm gonna let folks show up as we get rolling here. But um, so we do have a topic for today. We're going to talk a little bit about alternative substrates as a part of Substrate 101. Um, I might make a video for this too. I haven't really decided if I want to include it in the series. So you guys get to decide whether or not I should uh, turn this into a video as well. <laughs> but um, also I got something else I want to talk about because I got kind of a, a hot tip on something. And while it might not be something I'm going to take advantage of, you folks might want to. So let's first start with a couple of things. Um, Number one, this Saturday's video will be a slight break in Substrate 101. Um, <laughs> there's been a number of live stream chats I've been in and other unboxing videos I've seen where people have been asking, like, where my unboxing video is for the fish I bought from Dan's Fish. So uh, <laughs> I'm literally finishing editing that tomorrow so that I can sneak it in Saturday uh, instead of a Substrate 101 just a short break, and then we'll go back to Substrate 101 for a bit. Um, there's also going to be a little bonus video that's going to come out. Um, I have a small collaboration that I'm doing with Blake's Aquatics, who's actually in chat, so shout out to Blake. Uh, that'll come out as a bonus video rather than one of my normal Saturday videos. Uh, I know that Blake uploads uh, more than I do, so I'm going to try and time it so that our videos are out at a similar time. I'm hoping I can get that out, like, Friday just as a bonus um it's it's really cool like Blake did Blake did some cool stuff and there will be another video on Blake's channel so uh I'll have links in like the description of my video to that one and you can see the the collab that we did together uh kind of my side versus Blake's side so like Blake's side's on my channel my side's on Blake's channel I think it's fun um I think I think it's good stuff and then we'll go back to full structure 101 so before we dive in fully on substrate did you know that right now you can go to aquabid and you can buy fish directly from gary lang and for those who don't know i will show you this screenshot wait for it wait for it so if we go i track my finger all the way to the bottom over here where it says rainbow fish that is gary lang the username rainbow fish he has several fish up right now uh i imagine part of this is because of human malware he's not going around to clubs and speaking as much as he normally would where he would take some of his fish or eggs so you actually can buy fish directly from gary on aquabit right now kind of a big deal i won't lie because one there's two species of fish up there that i think are really cool one there's the pseudomagill cyanodorsalis which is a fish i will one day have they're brackish water they're like the only brackish water rainbow they're super super cool like big blue stripe and yellow stripe really really vibrant fish really really cool and then there's a couple of the big boy species um the Exquisita that's up there, uh, for those who want to go look, that's a a super, super cool um, fish. And I'll give you guys a link here in chat to Aquabid's uh, rainbow fish category. Also, if you go to the next page, so this is just the first page of rainbow fish, right? There's several great sellers here. The only thing I will tell you is there's... Um, oh God, I'm trying to remember the name of this, this other seller. There's one seller that's not good to buy from. <laughs> It's a bunch of junk. Uh, oh, a living artwork. Don't don't buy rainbows from that person. They're, they're junk. But on the second page, there's All Oddball Aquatics. That is Eric Bodrock. He is like the next great rainbow person to buy from as far as your Aquabid people. Uh, and he has Melanotania Goldii Kiura, which is one of the ones that Dancefish had in and sold out super fast. He has Melanotana Picta, another one. But maybe more importantly, he has Running River Rainbows for sale. So if you've ever wanted the Running River Rainbow, which I, 
I consider my crown jewel. That's a very, very important fish to me. He's got a group of running rivers for sale. Nice. That's all I can say, man. I mean, it's 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 not often that you get to uh, to pick up stuff from like some of the legends of the hobby. But there's your chance. <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh, there you go. Kelly Foreman just bought Picta, which I, I have a small group of Picta that I want to breed. Man, Picta, when you get a male up to like three inches, Pictas are so cool. They have so much color. They're a lot like a Goldie Eye Dakai. They don't get as big. But they have like that square Australian style finage instead of the more big round fins. They're just a, they're super vibrant fish. They show off all the time, which is nice. They don't like have the morning fade colors. Beautiful fish. Uh, and then just in case you've ever wanted to know, since we're talking about Aquabid, if you ever want to know the good sellers on Aquabid, okay? Uh, Roseline 17, Rob M, Aquasphere Discus, uh, there's LD Brown, and there's one more. Hold on. Rainbow Fish, of course. That's Gary Lang. That's like the best. Uh, I think, I can't remember, there, there's, some of these, like, have fish from other people, like, um, there's one other in here that I have to see their name to, to recognize it and remember it. Oh, they might have sold their fish. <laughs> uh, but, like, I've bought from most of those people at some point in time. And I can just tell you that they're all some of the better ones. Most of them will tell you exactly where their line came from, whether it's like, it came from Johannes Croft, or it came from Gary Lang, or it came from, you know, this person. Those are how you know the good ones. Um, like, for for instance, Aquasphere Discus, he has the Rosario Lacorte strain of Atinjo Bosmani, which is a really, really cool fish. Um, it's just comes from a different capture than, like, Gary Lang's line does. And it's just... Very, very cool. It was done by another guy who's like a total legend of the hobby, which is Rosario Lacorte. He's a like master breeder, mostly known for tetras, but happens to have a, a bloodline of Atinjo Bosmani that are really cool and a little different color than the ones that you get from Gary Lang. little PSA there. If you want to buy from Gary or from Eric, they're up right now. Uh, the other two like major ones that I would always say like pay attention to, anything from Rose Line 17 is super, super good. I'm actually trying to buy a specific fish from Roseline 17 right now. <laughs> but only because I have a couple of that fish already, and I want to get a few more just to make sure I have a good breeding group for when the couple that I have that I adopted from someone else get a little older. Uh, okay, with that being said, we're going to take our, our jaunt into the realm of substrate, alternative substrate. So this is not going to cover things like uh, blasting sand, which I didn't cover in inert substrate because it's just, it's a sand. It's just different color, right? Or um, I won't cover any of like the the side aqua soils. So I'll talk about things like fluorite in the aqua, in the active substrate video, okay? What we're going to cover are things like kitty litter, oil dry, and more specifically, I want to talk a little more in depth about two specific products. And that is, it, I'm sorry, I keep picking up like the cap to my water bottle. I'm a fidgeter by nature. So like, if my hands aren't super active while I'm talking, I've got to have something to fidget with. It's just the way I am. <laughs> um, the two that we really want to talk about are Turfus and Safety Zorb. Okay. So we're going to talk real broadly for a second here about kitty litter and oil dry oil dry is a yeah, yeah yeah well i had somebody specifically ask me about kitty litter in a comment so i want to cover it because i think it's there are people that have done it and it has its uses but wait okay so this is the clay based kitty litter you can't go doing some of the weird kitty litters all right um oil dry is a product specifically for cleaning up like oil spills or so it's used in like shops uh it's tractor supply companies the most common place to buy it you can get it at like home depots too basically anytime you spill something like oil or gasoline or something like that 
this is a product designed to go in there and suck all that stuff up and absorb it so that it's easy to clean up, okay? Why would you ever use this as a substrate? This is probably a question people would be asking. It's designed to clean up oil. What the heck? Okay, so the first thing you should note, you will need to rinse the ever-loving bejiminy out of this stuff. It's very, very dusty. You have to rinse and rinse and rinse it. It's worse than, like, play sand. It's worse than pool filter sand. You have to rinse it a lot to not cause, like, the death cloud in your aquarium that will never settle. You'll have to do 8 million water changes to fix it if you don't rinse this stuff really, really thoroughly. Now, why you would use this as a substrate? It absorbs a ton of stuff. So, if you were worried about excessive nitrates in your water, it's going to suck a lot of that up and hold it in the substrate. The problem is... It strips so much out of your water that it can become a problem keeping your water buffered so that you don't experience pH crash. Keep that in mind. Like There are people, I've seen stories of this, where people have like 400 TDS water out of the tap. They tried using specifically oil dry the product because Safety Zorb is another product designed to do this thing but it works slightly differently and it has stripped so many minerals out of their water that their water became acidic and caused health issues with their fish think about that for a second 400 tds water hard water we're talking we're getting liquid rock territory stripped it so when somebody transferred fish from their quarantine to this new setup display tank with plants, the fish had health issues. Now the plants that were root feeders could slowly f get that out of that oil dry, but it's so good at holding things in that eventually the plants had problems too, and it took the person a little while to figure out what the heck was going on. Okay, so that covers one. Don't use generic oil dry. Don't do it. it. There's better ways to do this on the cheap. And these are budget options. I normally don't like go, hey, we're going to go for the cheapest thing possible. I'm not a like save money at all costs guy. I'm usually a what is going to save me the most money in the long term. If I pay a little bit more up front, but get two or three more years out of something that I would going cheap, I'm going to do that. I, that's the way that my brain works, okay? <laughs> now, let's talk about kitty litter. Kitty litter, again, like somebody's mentioning in chat, you could use kitty litter to clean up oil spills. Obviously, we use it to deal with our cats if we have cats to deal with their waste. Much like other things, the clay-based kitty litter, which is what we're looking at, you have to rinse it and rinse it and rinse it and rinse it to get all that dust out to make sure that it comes out clean. Like oil dry, why it's useful is it pulls lots of stuff in. So it's gonna pull a ton of nutrients into itself and plants can very easily grip into it and root feed off of it. I'm gonna give you a guess, just we're gonna sit here for a second. What's the downside of kitty litter? The same thing I just described. <laughs> is that it will strip so much out of the water. Now, it doesn't strip as long, okay? Um, oil dry has such a high absorbency rate, which is part of the why they use it over kitty litter for dealing with messes. It will strip significantly more out than the kitty litter. However, the kitty litter will still strip some out, so sometimes you have to basically go through a long process of effectively mineralizing your kitty litter. If you're going to go through that much work, build your own mineralized soil at that point. And there's a process. We will cover that in dirted tanks. I promise I will explain the process. It'll, it'll be much easier. <laughs> it's like, it's way less work. 
and in the end, it lasts a lot longer. Now let's talk about the two that actually matter. Uh, first off is Safety Zorb, and this is similar to Oil Dry. Here's a picture. The, the gravelly looking stuff that's over here, not the sand, that's the Safety Zorb. Now, I will tell you one thing. I know a person who has been using Safety Zorb for years. That is the gentleman who is in charge of the Horticulture Awards Program for the Greater Seattle Aquarium Society. <clears throat> this is a guy who really, really knows his plants. And he has used Safety Zorb for many, many years. Now, he uses a lot of other different things. Okay? However, one of his primary display tanks, which is a beautiful tank full of Praycox rainbows he got from Gary Lang, uses safety zorb safety zorb much like oil dry is designed to clean up things like oil spills however unlike oil dry it doesn't strip quite as heavily when it comes to the mineral level so if you have hard water it's not going to like just rip everything out of it it's good at holding nutrients in but not completely stripping everything out it absorbs well but it also holds its shape like kitty litter and stuff like that starts to get these weird shapes when we when we get them in water permanently right or it breaks down it turns into this kind of messy muddy stuff safety zorb doesn't it stays kind of like this gravel look that we have here now the the granules aren't very big they're kind of um like like fluorite black, if you're familiar with that, not the sand, the actual grain granule. They're they're about that in size, somewhere between that and like Echo Complete. So it actually works very well for rooting a lot of plants. Where this product in particular is very good, if you had a tank that was very heavy on crypts or root feeding plants, this is where I would actually look at a budget option of something like Safety Zorb. Uh, again, like Tractor Supply Company or I think Home Depot carries it, Lowe's, uh, I would imagine Menards for those that are more toward the East Coast. Uh, and, and if you're not in the United States, you have some chain that I almost guarantee has Safety Zorb, but it needs to be specifically Safety Zorb. And um, I won't, I won't like do some link to it, but I will spell exactly as it is, which is because it's a, it's a kind of funky name. But it's spelled like this in chat, okay? So it's safe T Sorb S O R B. This specific name brand actually does a very good job of being a substrate. Again, make sure that we rinse this out. You don't have to rinse it as much as some of the other things. It it rinses you need to rinse it about as much as you do pool filter sand. Okay. It's actually a very, very good substrate. I have been very tempted after having a long conversation with my horticulture awards program chair to try it because i like the look if you look at it it's got a nice kind of like a uh, scrit gravelly look to it right it looks like uh if you guys remember watching the the video where they caught the Corys wild in peru for aquarium co-op as cory and dean and they pulled up some of that gravel that they were living on it looks a lot like that and I like that look. I think it's a good look. So it gives you kind of that gravel look, but is good at pulling those liquid fertilizers out of the water and keeping them at the root level for your root feeding plants. And you guys know I love crips. So it's kind of like this fusion of everything Bentley could possibly want. And it's cheap. It's not very expensive. A big bag of safety Zorb is like 50 bucks at like a tractor supply company. And that's like 50 pounds or something nonsensical like that. It's a lot. Okay. So, you you do want to take time. So, like, uh, Jeff is mentioning this in chat, which is perfect. If you go to, like, the bar report, which is uh, Tom Barr's forums, it strips a lot of stuff out of the water column. So, what they do is they take time and they charge it with minerals by feeding a bunch of fertilizer into the tank and letting it soak all that fertilizer up over the course of a couple weeks. Then they start planting in it. Okay? 
So what you're basically doing is like you would pump enough in there to where you read like 40 plus nitrates. And then you test the next day and it would probably be at like 10 or less. And you keep doing that until it holds steady or only drops down from like 40 to 20, right? Then at that point, you're good. And to answer uh, Aquatices, which you always have like... It's the, your name there. I, I look at it for a second, and my brain's like, "We know it's, it's supposed to be easy to pronounce, but we're reading it in a way that makes it hard to pronounce." <laughs> but I love your your screen name. It's so good. Um, you can use Safety Zorb completely by itself, which is how my uh, Horticulture Awards Program Chair, who, if you ever go to like PlanetTank.net and you see Seattle Aquarist gentleman named Roy, that's him. He's fantastic, and he'll never be on my channel ever because he he doesn't like you too. <laughs> <laughs> which is it's so funny to me because he's such a personable guy but um so you can use it you don't need to cap it you could cap it with another decorative gravel if you wanted to but you do not need to uh he has used it for years now but again just like jeff is mentioning you want to charge it with minerals so whether whatever your your fertilizer is we're going to charge it and then from there, it's really good for root feeding plants, okay? And it has a nice look. Like, I really actually like the look. I've seen it in person in several tanks. It's very pretty. Uh, now we're uh, we're going to address a question from Kelly here. Is it like Turfus? Let's talk about the next one that is worth talking about, and then we'll get to full question and answers, okay? Uh, which, by the way, while I, while I change pictures here to KP, thank you very much for the super chat. It's greatly appreciated. At Fish Room Fever the poop <laughs> thanks buddy so this is the next one we want to talk about which is turfus okay uh turfus bluntly put is extremely dirty <laughs> this is this goes back to like oil dry and kitty litter where you really do need to rinse the heck out of this stuff Oh, did I get it wrong? I, maybe Turfus is the more expensive one. I'm sorry, Jeff. Like, yeah. Safety Zorb is super cheap. It might only be like $10 or less for a 50-pound bag. I'm just... it. The brain... The only pro I've been working a lot. And we're in crunch time at work, so I'm working even more. <laughs> and we're in crunch time for the next two months. <laughs> but really important crunch time, so... Yeah, yeah, uh, Safety Zorb is, like, dirt cheap. Uh, don't quote me on prices, because the brain's only so functional. I've, I've spent my time, like, making sure I had the right talking points in my head, and not the price points in my head. <laughs> anyway, we'll get back to Turfus. So, Turfus is used in, um... Under, like, some of the, the fields and stuff like that, where they'll, they'll do artificial, um... Artificial turf, right? And there's other... It's used in all sorts of types of planting. Like, you'll see some of them that use them on, uh, like, golf courses and stuff like that. It, there's a lot of uses for turfus. It's a very, very popular product. It's really good. It's kind of... The, the, the easiest way to think about it is, like, a produced mineralized soil. It is a mineralized clay product. However, unlike um, our aqua soils, you're, you shouldn't really see very much water buffering down. You're not going to see it soften the water too much. But it's extremely dirty. I have to stress this. Like, I know I said it earlier, but you rinse the heck out of this stuff if you're going to use it. Again, much like uh, our safety zorb, this is actually really, really good because it's a mineralized clay for root feeders. It's a nice kind of neutral brown color. And I think there's another color of turfus, if I remember right, you can get. Uh, there's nothing that's like black, you know, kind of like your aqua soils tend to be. But it's a little more expensive. And this is kind of like the, the way you would do a dirted tank without actually buying real dirt. <laughs> that's like, I think that's the easiest way to put it, okay? So a little finer. It's really easy to uh, get a lot of your rooter plants in there and just make sure they never come out because it will lock down pretty good. 
it doesn't get too muddy over time. And it does have, uh, Blake's kind of mentioned this, it has a more natural color, you know, because it's, it's dirt brown, basically, right? It's a clay. It's a little more natural. Uh, okay, there's a very dark gray. Thank you, Kelly. Fantastic. Um, but where I would caution you with this particular product, okay, is I would argue that you are better off using the safety zorb. And let me explain why. I have seen more reports of success with Safety Zorb because of the way it's designed than with Turfus. Because a lot of your like Planet Aquarists, right? They love their cleanup crews and all that stuff that's going to kind of root in that surface level a little bit. And as Novice Aquarius is actually mentioning... This is a hard bait clay product. It has kind of sharp edges to it, and rooting around in it can kick up a lot of dirt. It kicks up a ton of gunk in the water column because they can slowly break this stuff down and it starts kicking up dust and nonsense and it starts clogging up your filter, plain and simple. Now, will most aqua soils do the same thing over time? Like they'll get mullum and they'll kick it up and it looks dirty and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. That, that's that's part of having those kind of fish, right? But I would argue because Turfus is a little more expensive, once you understand how to use Safety Zorb, I think Safety Zorb is one, a much better looking product, and two, a much more effective product for the same purpose. Really, really, really good with root feeders and okay with a lot of your stems, and it's cheap. All right? Now, there's, there's a question here. How does that compare to Seachem Fluorite? Um, I don't want to go into too many details on Fluorite because I want to cover Fluorite in active substrates. And that's going to be a little longer video. Just a warning. Active substrates is going to be the longest video in the Substrate 101 series. Because there's a lot of detail to go over. And I may, I may need to break it up into two, honestly. Just so it's not like a ridiculous runtime. Man, you, see, <laughs> chat, you have this better than I do. I'm just going to put this out there. Like, the couple of you who have played around with this kind of stuff. Most of what I've seen is that people aren't super impressed with Turfus compared to Safety Zorb, for those who have tried both. Because it's lighter, so it's a little easier to dislodge and get it up in the water column. It's dusty. And it can get all over your, like, your hardscape and stuff like that and look kind of gross. But, if you wanted that natural kind of mud bottom look, this would be your product, okay? I would argue, if you want an alternative substrate that isn't like sand, gravel, or an aqua soil, look into Safety Zorb, read, 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 read about it. Make sure you understand how to apply it and what to do correctly so that it's prepared and it's not just stripping everything out of the water for that little bit. You got to charge it, right? Keep that in mind. But once you do, stuff is really effective. I've seen a thing of Safety Zorb that has gone from three different tanks over the course of five years and it still held its shape, still looked good, and still worked perfectly. That's a killer trio of things to have. Now, granted, I've seen the same thing with the aqua soils. I've got, uh, it's like eight year old ADA Amazonia in one of my tanks because it came from someone else's tank that had the tank running for four years, and I've now had it running for four years. It still holds its shape. It's still producing like a champ. My crypts that are in that tank are growing like nobody's business, and the only thing I put in there is liquid fertilizer. So if, when they tell you that active substrates only last for two years, I'm I'm telling you, a part of that video for active substrates is going to tell you that's a lie. That is a marketing tactic. At least that's my opinion. <laughs> uh, so I'll answer one quick question. I'm going to consider that question. We're going to go into question and answer. So at this point, guys, thank you for my spiel. Uh, some short recaps. We talked about Turfus. We talked about Kitty Litter. We talked about Oil Dry. And we talked about Safety Zorb. 
catch it on the replay if you missed it. All great information. We also talked about the fact that Gary Lang, man, myth, legend, has Rainbow Fish for sale on Aquabid right now. Okay. Uh, if you want to make sure that I don't miss your question, please do at Bentley Pasco. That makes sure that it highlights it and makes it really easy for me to see. Let's cover some question and answers. First one I'm going to handle here is from Andekin. And that is, is anyone, has anyone tried Hydroton, which is a hydroponic clay pebbles? Uh, man, see, Jacob an answering it perfectly. So I've seen this as well, although I've not personally tried it. I had a friend who's a, like, immersed grow master try this. The problem is that, like, some of them sink and some of them float. And sometimes it can take forever to get them to finally sink so what i have seen people do is when they're setting their tank up they'll use those aquaponic pebbles they'll put them down and they'll put a, a cap over the top like you would with a dirted tank if you're going to go to that route honestly you might as well look at something more like the safety zorb because it can do the same thing where it's really good at absorbing things it's porous so it's really easy to grip onto but it's heavier so it just naturally falls down. And it's dirt cheap. It's dirt cheap. It's probably cheaper than the Hydroton is, honestly. Uh, and you can soak them for a long, long time and make them do it. But just there's cheaper routes to do the same thing. <laughs> there's cheaper routes to do the same thing. And if you're trying to get something like the larger stuff in order to build height in a tank, just use lava. Just use lava stone. Go get uh, the bags of, like... Uh, your Home Depots and all that stuff will carry them. They're used for, instead of bark, typically, they're used as a top layer in your garden of lava rock. Builds a lot more height, super, super porous. You're not going to condense it very much, and it makes sure that you have good oxygenation and water flow down underneath your substrate if you're going to build a lot of height. Uh, I will actually talk specifically about lava rock in the, if I were to build my perfect substrate setup, what would I do? That'll be in that video toward the very, very end of Substrate 101. With that being said, let's dive into questions. So uh, questions don't have to be specifically about Substrate, just a heads up. You can you can ask about pretty much anything. Uh, Lumpy Dog, no, I don't work for Russian election hackers. I work for Microsoft. <laughs> Technically speaking, I work for the U.S. government. That's under Microsoft. Fun stuff. Fun, fun stuff. So I'll make sure, like, early chat that there wasn't a good question that I haven't missed. Okay, here's a good one. Uh, Green Grove Aquatics. Hopefully you're still here so I can answer this question for you. Uh, I've heard that trimming down ha dwarf hair grass will encourage growth. Is that true? So any of your grass types uh, and your carpenters in general, like Monte Carlo and stuff, as stuff gets tall, if you trim it, it encourages new growth. And that new growth will create density because usually where it wants to, when it wants to do that, it's going to start spreading out. Because it, eventually you can get these plants to understand that if they start growing too high, they're just going to get trimmed. So it's better for them to grow out. And any time that you do one of the triggers that triggers new growth, it is most common for a plant to spread around where that old growth was before it tries to fill in that old growth the old growth has to die off right so yes it will encourage growth but it won't necessarily speed the growth up if that's what you're you're thinking by the term of encouraging growth it's just going to encourage side growth right and if over time yeah you're going to get in the middle it's not like you're going to cut this and this center part's never going to grow it's going to grow around it like some kind of weird bald spot but what it does is over time it encourages the plant to grow a wider more robust area so that it stays safe from these random things that keep breaking the plant is the way that it mentally looks at it. it's like i keep getting broken i need to fix this problem so it spreads out it's kind of just how uh i guess it's not like plant psychology right they don't they're not really sentient but that's just how plants have evolved to protect themselves especially in the case of plants that can be aquatic do, 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 do. <laughs> blake said shout out to living artwork <laughs> watch the beginning of the stream if you missed that because 
I got a dog nom. <laughs> oh, man. And yes, I'm aware I'm not selling you on some of those products. That's the point. <laughs> Uh, so I think, and I think I answered this, uh, Blake and asked, but I'll just kind of recover it. Do, do you know if natural clay kitty litter has the same or similar acidic buffering capabilities of clay aqua soil? The answer to that is no. And part of what gives those, those buffering capacities is where the soil that they use to create aqua soil is sourced from. It, most of it comes from former rice beds. So it's this like highly mineralized and naturally, um, the, the chemicals that are in it naturally happen to just acidify the soil a little bit where like the type of clay they use in kitty litter doesn't come from those places. So it doesn't have the same effect. I'm sure it could over time do some small softening of the water just because it's, it's absorbing some levels of minerals out of the water and that is taking the hardness out of the water. Right. But not to the way that aqua soils are designed. It's going to strip a lot at first and then it's not going to do anything because once it's stripped kind of once it's going to be useless and muddy and disgusting don't use kitty litter just don't do it <laughs> there's other things that are cheap that are better <laughs> oh yeah let me see i'll make sure i caught up Okay, so uh, Charlie's asking, what does the red LED do for plants? So plants help, here, sorry, plants. Plants absorb certain spectrums of light better than they do most of the rest. So like we have a broad spectrum of light, right? There's this, the, the great rainbow, if you will, but there's this huge spectrum of light, right? Plants really only pay attention to light in very specific ranges. So there's the blue range, the green range, the red range, and then uh, certain white tones basically encompass all of those. But really, plants only absorb. So if you look at any plant light, right, the, they have these big spikes in certain parts of their color spectrum, okay? And really all that is is they, they realize that these are the ones that science has proven plants absorb the most. So they're pushing the light in those places to get the maximum capability for the plants. The problem you can run into with some of those colors, red not so much, but usually blue, is that algae also does the same thing with some of that light, which is why you'll watch me and like I'll tell you on a fluval light, dial your blue light way the heck down. You'll still get good plant growth, but you won't have the algae issues as much. Whereas with red light, red light typically, because it doesn't penetrate as deep as blue light does, doesn't tend to feed algae. Algae really doesn't utilize the red light as well as a plant will, but plants, which are going to get closer to that surface of the water, it's going to penetrate in, it's going to use it. Any of your green plants, especially, are going to use red light pretty well. It's this, technically, the, I think it's the second most efficient light that it absorbs outside of like the daylight spectrum white. So that's this, uh, you know, between 5,600 and 6,500 Kelvin if for color temperature. There's that. Uh, beyond that, if you push more red light, your plants that are red will appear more red because they have more of that light to reflect. If you, if you want to do like a small, you can falsify your color kind of, that's a, another thing you can do. <laughs> but... Basically put, the there are certain spectrums of light that plants absorb significantly better than the rest of the entire spectrum of light. So there's specific, uh, it's measured in nanomoles, their frequency. Think of them like a frequency, but they're measured in nanomoles, and it measures those in certain points. And at those points, like the blue, the green, the red, is where plants are the most efficient at absorbing that light. So it's not that they... Um, it's not like they don't absorb the rest of them. It's just that the percentage of that much light, which is where we go from PAR, which is photoactive radiation, to PER, photosynthetic usable radiation, we use more in specific frequency ranges as a plant than we do in the rest of them. So I hope that helps answer that question. Uh, probably more detail than we need, but that's just how I roll. <laughs> Oh, man. 
Uh, let's see here. Neverland. I'm currently dealing with hair algae on my stem plants and green spot algae on my Anubias. Any tips? Uh, day sim settings on your video and a 20-gallon long tank. So my, my hope here is that we can solve this very simply. Because the uh, this I think this is the worst thing I did in that video is that I don't specify that all of my settings are really designed for like a 40 breeder or taller tank. And when we get to those shallower tanks, because like a 40 breeder is 17 inches tall, right? Well, we're only 13 inches tall on a 20 long. Now all of a sudden we're pushing way more light than we are because that four inches of water really matters, okay? So what we want to do is we want to dial the power of the light back a little bit. The overall curve we want to keep, right? That look is good, but what we want to do is take the power away. So if we take it all the way to 100% power on the whites at our, our peak time, instead we want to look at dialing that back to like 65% or 75% as our target. Now what we might do is dial it all the way to 50 at first. Help fight that algae off, let the plants regain control, Remove as much of the algae by hand that you can. It's going to be harder with that dust algae, but with the hair algae you can. Then, once we see, like, we're going to monitor for a week at a time. So we remove all our algae and we monitor for a week. If we see no algae growth whatsoever, which is completely different than what we're used to, we're, we're getting an inclination and we can start moving it up. Usually what I like to do is go two weeks in, okay? If in two weeks we haven't seen... The, the rate of algae growth we've seen before, or it's effectively stopped. Now we know, okay, we've got it low enough to where the plants have taken back over. And as long as the plants still look okay, keep that in mind. Now we can dial it up a little bit. So if we were at 50, now we're going to ratchet it up to like 60%. And and we'll do that across all our all of our values. So if, if the value was originally 10, we'll take it down to 5. We're going to reduce it in half. And then we're going to just bump it up to 6, right? Whatever that percentage. I know this is going to be a little hard because it requires some math. But if if you really, really need to, you're welcome to email me. It's bentley.pasco at gmail.com. I'll happily walk you through this stuff. Okay? And then we're going to slowly ratchet it up a week at a time monitoring the algae. And we're going to look at a target between 65 and 75 that gives us good plant growth but does not see that algae returning and growing in a rate that we can't handle. Okay, small amounts of glass algae is normal. That's okay. Little bits of green algae that gets on our, our hardscape is okay. But if we start seeing dust algae accumulating on our plants and big swaths of hair algae or blackbeard algae, that is problematic algae and we're going too far with our light. Okay, that's, that's the first step I would take. Algae in general is like a multi-tier process. There's like a triangle of, of doom you kind of have to follow, but we can fight it. That's the important part. And again, if you need some help walking through this process, by all means, please email me. It does take me a couple days to respond typically, but I will help you and walk you through the process and dial it all the way in. Hope that helps you, Neverlamp. Okay. Uh, Herp Diversity, what type of potting soil is recommended for dirted tanks? Wait for the dirted tank episode of Substrate 101. <laughs> I'll, I'll cover it in depth. I promise. I promise. Uh, I don't want to do too much of that in just in a live stream because I think it's it warrants having the depth of a video uh, and having the, the reasons why we select certain things when it comes to a dirty tank. Even if that is not my personal preference, I will go over the ways to do it that are generally correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah. All right. Uh, and Streetwise, thank you. Oh, man, a bunch of Super Chats. Woo! It's BYZ. Edward, hey, buddy. Uh, thank you for your help with the limpets question. I followed up with a message. Yeah, um, I saw it, but I got crazy busy toward the end of my day, and I knew that I had a hard deadline to get out in order to make my stream. So uh, I'll be answering that probably tomorrow morning. Just just a heads up. I saw it. I kind of glanced at it. and was like, oh, yeah, I know how to answer that. <laughs> but we'll, we'll cover it. Don't worry. I'll get back to you. Uh, da 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 Oh, man, Jacob, I, I convinced you to buy a Fluval product. I swear, I, I, I heard this recently. Can I just tell you something that made me feel absolutely humbled? Uh, I got an email from a gentleman. Maybe it was a comment. Was it a comment? I think it was a comment. Who had said that he'd contacted Fluval and asked about recommended settings. And Fluval sent a response linking my videos 
on the fluval lights. Can I tell you, like, how absolutely, like, thrilled that made me feel? Like, Fluval's staff is linking my videos rather than telling them, oh, like, oh, we suggest you just use this setting or that setting. They're just linking my videos. Go like, hey, this is a, this guy, this guy's got it down. Just use this stuff. Woo, that felt so good. I won't lie. I, if I, if I ever, if there was a Bentley setting on the Fluval 4, whenever that comes out, it, I'm sure they'd be like a Master of Quarter Quarter Culture setting or some dumb thing, like whatever tag they want to do to like not call it my name. Uh, that would be the most thrilling thing probably in my aquatic career to this point. <laughs> uh, Patrick's Aquatics. Hey, can you answer my question I'm about to send? Yes. <laughs> Neverland. Uh, oh, man, thanks for the five bucks super chip. Neverland, you're welcome. I uh, appreciate you answering my question. Yeah, and like I said, shoot me an email. Feel free. I love helping people out when I can. Just sometimes it's a, a touch slow. <laughs> it depends on how crazy busy I am. And yes, Herp Diversity does sound like a college. Uh, so Patrick's Aquatics, I'm getting in some angelfish tomorrow in the mail. I'll be adding an established spun filter from another tank. This seems like such a dumb question, but would it be better to use water from the established tank or use fresh condition tap water? So the way that you basically instant cycle a tank is by taking a established filter from a different tank and moving it over to a fresh tank. You don't have to use established water. But what you could do, if you're a true crazy person, and you would have to do this like tonight, is you would purposely go into gravel vac, that established aquarium, and get a little bit of mulm out of it. Get that in a bucket, and then transfer that mulm. Make sure you don't have a lot of water movement. It'll settle naturally. Transfer a small amount of that mulm into the new tank. And the reason why we do this is as mulm breaks down, right... Bacteria naturally colonize in there, and that mulm stops being potentially dangerous waste and actually becomes just a breeding ground for beneficial bacteria. So a lot of times, like if you look at my tanks, right, tanks where I raise young fish, you will often see small amounts of mulm. And I've had so many people like, your tanks are so dirty. I'm like, yeah, because it is a feeding ground for one, for fish that are very small, which rainbow fish are. Or in this case, I have one tank that has, like, baby uh, scarlet bass in it. And they just sit and pick in the mall and get all the stuff they need, right? All these microorganisms that we can't see, but they can. They're just picking up all these little microorganisms and bacteria that they're eating. No problem. I, I barely have to feed that tank. Because that colony keeps them going, and they're such small fish, right? So I feed, like, every three days. And I put a teeny tiny little pinch of, like, just enough. To, to keep that going and to keep that bacteria fed. Easy peasy. Same thing will happen, right? You can get it in there. It gets a small amount of that extra beneficial bacteria. But if you're already transferring like fully cycled media, like whether it's a sponge filter or um, ceramic media, as long as there's enough waste being produced to keep it alive, you'll be fine. Not a dumb question at all. All right. So we got about 10 minutes left. Man, streams go fast. One hour streams go so quick. <laughs> These weekly streams are great. Uh, just also a heads up for, for those that might be here. Normally we have a once a month stream we're doing once a week for a little while. Uh, I don't know how long that's going to be. We'll see how long human malware decides to like ruin my life. <laughs> um, and, and by ruin my life, like throw, throw the most great monkey wrench in my plans for getting you guys a, a, a program that I promised. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but let me i should take this image of the stupid turfus off shouldn't i i'm a this is how you know i'm a terrible streamer and i don't do this very often <laughs> anyway um <laughs> i realize how bad it's gonna look for a whole stream it's just a stupid picture of turfus up by my head Whew. anyway uh so since we're doing weekly live streams we won't do the once a month live stream it'll just be videos every saturday uh and some cool stuff is coming soon beyond just the Substrate 101 series, which I'm actually really enjoying doing. And uh, we've got the the collab with Blake that's coming very, very soon. I just have to finish my edits on it. I'm going to try and push that out Friday. And then there's the the little unboxing from Dan's Fish, which will be Saturday. Then we go back to Substrate 101. But there's some other cool stuff, some collabs coming up. I hope you guys really, really enjoy some of the stuff I'm trying to do. Uh, human malware has made certain things hard, but... 
it's also made a couple things easy, which is interesting <laughs> in the sense that, uh, you know, some some collaborations done digitally are happening uh, and, and stuff like that. Yes. Uh, Zelf, which one cool name. Would you ever make a substrate lasagna like LRB? So Lucas Bretz. I already have. <laughs> but so my 75 gallon long the one that has um my melanotania bow and i a lot of times it's in the background when i do videos uh it's it's the one that has lots of crips and then like a big java fern dead center right and there's the the blaheri rainbows that are in there which you'll see that really soon with all the new ones looks great and uh a bun there's like cory's and danger noodle that's danger noodles tank that is using a like substrate lasagna style technique. So it's a layer of fluval stratum, then it has a layer of um, echo complete in the middle, and another layer of fluval stratum over the top. And in the echo complete layer, I laid a bunch of root tabs when I first established the the tank. So it was basically like thin layer of fluval stratum as a start, nice big layer of echo complete, lots of root tabs plugged into it, and then I capped it with more fluval stratum and the, the reason why i do it in that order is when i push certain things deeper like um you, what i'm going to do with the root systems of cryptocurrines right they get to go down into that echo complete and really get held in there nice be around all those root tabs but the caps make sure that not too much of that is leaching into the water right it's going to get absorbed by all that active substrate makes a nice little system buffers a little bit does the job and when i talk about the like my perfect substrate system you will hear about some some real lasagna nonsense going on jake barber <laughs> if you're in winlock washington Ooh, dude i'm down you know what i really want can i can i do a total side that's not aquatics related um because like i go to a local barber it's a it's a little uh a gal runs it um uh, and she's super super nice i was really worried when human malware went down uh that she might not be able to keep her business open and as soon as she opened like day one i was in there getting my hair cut because i, I want to support her like i have to go in there again because this is getting long but um a proper like hot ra hot towel razor shave it's one of the best feelings in the world as a as a guy let's i need one of those sometime soon because you know shave your own face is not as good <laughs> you're just making sure you don't get bad razor burn and i have super fair skin so i razor burn no matter how hard I try. Anyway, <laughs> we'll get back to questions. Get a last couple in here before. Uh... Oh, dude, Jacob, you're the best. I might, f I might force myself to win lock for that. Uh, from Chandra, I have hard water and low KH. How do you maintain raised KH for live bearer planted tanks? So the the easiest way to get carbonate hardness is either by adding calcium carbonate or injecting co2 you can you, you keep in mind calcium carbonate you do not need a lot there's a uh, plenty of good information about raising just kh on planettank.net if you do a google search it should bring it up um, but if all else fails if you have trouble finding the article for that shoot me an email and i'll send it to you i'll, I'll track it down also uh jerry yeah i was happy to help you with your email if I think you sent a I think you sent a follow up and I'll, I'll get back to it soon. Like I said, it's a little cracked at work toward the end of the day. I answered a few emails while I was on my lunch, uh, and literally it was like speed answering email while trying to uh, eat a burrito. <laughs> like, I, I I get like about a fifteen minute lunch most days, just because of of how busy my work is and the particular project I work on. So if you get like a hurried burst of email and then don't see an email for the rest of the day or, or until the next day or or even worse like sometimes two days that that's why <laughs> i only have so much time <laughs> in my lunches some days during the the crunch that's going on right now to get stuff done so sometimes they get delayed 
a day or two before I can get to them, and then I try to do as much as I can in a very short window. Just want to make sure I didn't miss anything real crazy up here. Uh, I think we're talking about certain light settings on the Fluval. And yeah, if, if all fails, like if you guys... If you guys really do need help with the Fluval lights, feel free to email me. I'm happy to help people with that stuff. Like, I love those lights to death and trying to maximize a light for every person's tank. Because each, each tank kind of needs a slightly different tweak to the settings that are in my video. And I think that's the thing I do the worst, which is why I need a new one. I need a new one to cover that and also cover um, kind of like the, I just got a Fluval light. I've never used one before. What do I do? Right? So I don't think my videos do a good job of explaining that. And I want to do that better. Um, plus, you know, just updated because I've had more time with the lights. So I've, I've learned some other things, too. Uh, not to say that I don't use any of my settings. I actually use my day sim on every tank now except one. And the one that doesn't use day sim just uses a lower powered day sim because there's not enough plant life and it's slightly shallower. It's the only difference. I, I use day sim everywhere. I love that freaking setting. <laughs> it's been doing so well for me. And then I don't have enough time to trim all my plants. <laughs> it's so terrible. <laughs> it's so terrible. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, Pugs Tanks. Uh, what will you do for iron? So I normally dose iron as a liquid. So that I, because I use active substrates all the time, they're going to pull some of that iron in. Right? Um, and that just helps. If I needed to get iron in the substrate there's a couple of things you can do number one um i might have done this in a tank <laughs> after i learned a trick if you can find grape leaves like what you would use to wrap up some mediterranean food right the certain there's all sorts of dishes in mediterranean cooking where you use grape leaves as a wrap you can buy them online they come in just like a light uh brine solution lightly rinse them off grape leaves are very high in iron put them in your substrate done you, you literally can like just tear them up almost or roll them up like little root tabs and boop get them in your substrate just like a root tab big iron source yeah this is actually like a, a super secret trick i've talked about in a video about crypts that one of like my my crypt guru who grows all his stuff immersed so that he can get them to flower and get that because that matters to him. He puts little bits of grape leaves in every single time he plants a fresh crypt. That way they have something to slowly take over time. The other thing you can do is look for any of the root tabs. Like if you watch the root tab video in the Fertilizer 101 series, I have these big, big disc root tabs that are like a clay red color. Those naturally have more iron to them. The final thing you can do is go get fluorite red, like a small bag of fluorite red. They have a bag that's only like yay big, right? It's like six pounds or something like that. Fluorite red naturally has a lot of laterite in it. Get laterite in there. A little bit of laterite adds iron, really good. You just mix it in with your substrate. Uh, the other thing, there's the uh, Brightwell has their own laterite base in the, the their substrate. It's, I think it's called Laterin, if I remember right. I'd have to look up the exact name. I have some downstairs that I'm going to be using in a specific setup sometime soon, and I'll talk about it in depth because it, it does matter. But there's also some ways to, like, get Laterite built into your substrate, or you can dose it separately if you have a really nice active substrate, and it'll it'll get pulled in. All right. So the I'm going to answer, like, two last questions. And then we'll go. I don't want to run too much over time because there's another stream starting, I think, from someone else. And I don't want to, I don't want to run them over, but. <laughs> uh, Ian, have you ever tested the wet spot complete all in one liquid ferns? So I have not um, just because I've, I've used aquarium co-ops easy green for a really, really long time. And most of the liquid fertilizers have really negligible differences between them. The only caveat to that is like flourish when they're and and the ADA stuff. When it's designed in a like multi product array where they're designed to be dosed in a specific way, they tend to have a lower concentration 
were like Thrive, Easy Green, Dustin's Grow Juice. Uh, there, there's a ton of them, right? There's a ton. Uh, the the Brightwell uh, Florin Multi, which I I've, I've been using quite a lot lately. Um, they're all really, really, really similar. So that there's in the end, it's a small advantage. It's basically finding the one that works the best in your water. And yeah, Jay Nunley, you're saying now, like, gee, that's that's Thrive. It's a good product. Very, very nice. Um, find the one that works best for you and just stick to it. I've seen a lot of people that say, like, I used Thrive and I got algae and I switched to Easy Green and I stopped getting algae. Or I had Easy Green and I always got algae and I switched to Thrive and the algae stopped. Right? Right? The, the differences are minimal. But you know what? If you see a small difference changing, stay to that thing. Whatever gives you the best performance for your buck, stay to that thing. Um... I, 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 that being said, I'm not opposed to trying the wet spot stuff, but I know that wet spots not like they don't sponsor channels at all. So it's not like they would just hand me one. I'd have to pay for it out of pocket. And then I have to basically make an, a full online order to make it worthwhile or drive down to Portland, which during human malware, that's not happening. But maybe when things uh, open back up, my, my lady does have family in Portland and we'll eventually go back down there. So maybe I'll just drop by the wet spot, wet spot at some point, buy a bottle and give it a shot. Because why not? I think they're a great company, right? They they do a really, really good job of shipping fish. They carry a very wide selection of fish. They have a really cool store to go through. But honestly, I've, I'm have i that person who's like the if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality. I was raised in a hot rod shop. And you'd get all sorts of people to be like, hey, I need you to do X, Y, Z. Well, what's wrong with the car? Oh, nothing. I just don't. Just don't do it. <laughs> right? That's like that was something instilled in me as a kid from my father. Uh, but yeah. You know, I've, I've, I've been lucky in that Aquarium Co-op's Easy Green worked phenomenally for me, and I've tried some other stuff in that time just out of curiosity to see what kind of difference I, because I'm, I'm naturally, like, I want to test, I want to play, I want to mess with things, but sometimes I will spend more time testing other things and just keep my fertilizer set because that's the thing that I like keeping the most, I hate to say this, but the most brain dead just because I'm already... Uh, <laughs> kind of busy and lazy sometimes when it comes to like fertilizing properly. So sometimes I'll skip my normal regime and doing the thing that makes it the easiest for me, generally what I'm going to do. So liquid all in ones tends to be my go to. Woo! Long, long way to answer. Have I ever tested that? <laughs> oh man. Uh, Cichlids23. This will be my last question. And then, uh, I'll send you guys on your way. Thank you so much for being here tonight, folks. It's been an absolute blast laughing at myself mostly. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed kind of the topics we've been going through. So uh, my, my 3.0 created an algae farm. What do I do? You send me an email, bentley.pasco at gmail.com. I'll even put it in chat for you. Ready? Bam. And there it is. And we'll work it. We'll work through it. Um, cause I'll need a little bit more details about just my tank is an algae farm, but I will work you through and get it no longer an algae farm. Unless you like having an algae farm. If you breed a lot of shrimp, you like having an algae farm. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, uh, Omar, just, I'll, I'll read this comment just cause I liked it. Uh, once human error 404 is over. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> uh, usually do a series on other people's tanks. Uh, maybe a myriad tour of other hobbyist tanks rooms. Uh, yeah, I would, dude, I would never worry about burnout. Like I've, I've always got something in my brain and I just really enjoy this kind of stuff, but there are, um, some fish rooms of some people I know that I want to be able to tour. I'm hoping, I was hoping to travel some this year, but I didn't get to. So maybe next year, if, if human malware goes away, I'll be able to travel a little. There's a few places that, uh, I want to visit and do some tours of and just, you know, meet some, some folks that watch the channel and what have you because that's fun. There's this really, really great um, group of folks that actually like run a farm, not a fish farm, but a farm farm. And they happen to be fish enthusiasts on the side. And they have a phenomenal fish room that is on the, the peninsula that I want to go visit. And they're good friends of mine. So, yeah. Anywho. I will cover tanks and stuff like that eventually. I just don't... There's a lot of YouTubers who do like uh, the submit stuff via Reddit or whatever. And I... I don't want to do that because that's their kind of thing. But over time, I will. Some of the aquarists that I really love uh, who are friends of mine or what have you, 
being able to actually like tour some of their places when human malware is a little more calmed down definitely going to happen don't you worry about that all right guys that's it we're a little over time but i had an absolute blast we'll be here next tuesday same bat time 6 p.m pacific 9 p.m eastern we'll have a new topic we'll have a couple new videos coming out some rainbow stuff then we'll get back to substrate 101 in depth as always guys thank you so much for watching stay awesome have a fantastic night be safe out there and if you're in a hot place like stay cool because it's it's hot all right it's hot out there stay awesome guys <laughs>